Hey, hello, what do you know? Okay, let's see how this works. Um, yeah, let's see how this works. So we're gonna come over here, and get this notebook again. Um, I suppose right now the real things that we're questioning are, <sighs> what is a tension? What is a tension? Um, that's what I'm wondering. I've been trying to learn how to implement attention in Keras. It's challenging. Uh, there aren't exactly straightforward notebooks that say like, hey, do this or do that. Um, there's one from Machine Learning Mastery. This one. I wonder how many people it's bugging that it says attention. Let me go to Detoder with the Keras. There we go. So we're creating uh, sequences of, uh, let's see, one, two, three, four, five numbers uh, for the input and the output is uh, just a slice of that sequence, the first two numbers. Uh, so I have a little notebook here that I've kind of copied what he did and we wrote it some. Uh, let's see if I can explain it just real quick. Really, we should break this out into a function here anyway. So. Let's go up to the top right here, and uh, yeah, delete some of this stuff. It's not needed. And we have got NumPy and TensorFlow coming in. Cool. Uh, from there, we're gonna make a little function. It's gonna say define training, get training data. Just call it training data. And there's some variables here that I went ahead and just put in. So they're not variables, they're static numbers. Uh, for example, we have a number of different features of 76. So, uh, so when we're talking about a sequence of five numbers, um, that number is going to be a random number between, I think it's zero and 75, 76 different numbers. Um, so for example, here we're creating a random integer and setting the max of 76. Uh, I think that's exclusive, so it's zero to 75. Um, the size of that is 105, so we're creating 100 different uh, examples, uh, and each one has five elements in it. Uh, and then every one of those numbers will be a random number between 0 and 75. Um, so that's our initial array. Uh, coming out is yeah. just to show it while we're running it. So there's our X. Um, there's a hundred different uh, sets of five numbers going from zero to 75. Our Y, I'll go ahead and print out both this time. So again, here's our X. Totally new numbers because it randomly generated them. Um, and then I haven't added that part there yet. Boom. So again, one more time, let's look at this. First two uh, sequences are gonna be 48, 13, 57, blah, blah, 65, 29, 49, blah, blah. So we're looking for that 48, 13, and 65, 29. We go down here to our first two out. There's our 48, 13, 0, 0, 0, 65, 29, 0, 0, 0. So you see what we're doing? Five numbers, take a slice of two of those numbers, and the other three numbers are gonna be a padded zero. Um, in this tutorial here, he creates a few functions to go through that. Um, and here, we're just using NumPy, creating a random array, copying that array. You have to copy it there, otherwise in this next step, when you're setting values to zero, it will set it on your X array as well. Um, and then, one more thing we're gonna do here. XOH and YOH, uh, X one hot encoded, Y one hot encoded. Um, instead of actually having that number in there of 0 to 75, uh, you're going to have an array of that many uh, elements, and it's going to be one hot encoded. So it's going to be sparse, everything's going to be 0 except for the, uh, the element at the indice for that number. So if we're looking here, um, 48, 13, 57, 57, 46, we're going to turn this into another array 
Um, it's actually going to be, this is an array of five numbers, and we're going to turn this into an array of five arrays of 76 elements each. Um, and then each array will be one hot encoded there. So this first would be an array of 48 elements, and the element at position 49 is going to be marked 1 because uh, we're going from indexes to actual numbers, right? So here, again, another array, uh, an element at number 14 will be marked 1. Same here. One hot encoding. You already know what this is. I'm just explaining it. So we're on the same page. We know it. So here, we're going to make a uh, just a super simple model. We're just making a sequential model. So layer after layer. We have our input layer, again, um, 5 and 76, because it doesn't really care what our batch size is. Our batch size going in here, um, I don't know what the batch size going in here is. I'm guessing it's one. It's uh, When we're calling fit on this, it's doing one item at a time. Um, take a look at that in just a second. But anyway, here's our input. Sequence of five numbers, 76 out. Uh, then with a dense layer after that. Um, yeah, so I'm not even calling it LSTM on this. This is just a uh, uh, a dense layer of 76, right? Boom. And then when we call fit, we have that. And if we wanted to have something fun, we could say uh, model m.predict. Can I just call m on it? I think I can just call m on it. Uh, X, O, H, just go up to the first element. There we go. Here's our number coming back. If we took a argmax from that, I think it's what, 2 numpy or... So... going on here? 1, 5, 76. Okay. Yeah, so for each of these, we actually need to call argmax arg on the other um, axis. That's what I was doing wrong. Uh, okay, argmax that axis is 1, 2, which are none an array of one dimension, you're an array of three dimensions. You say so right here, right? Three dimensions. Oh. Because of the tuple. Okay, that looks more right. What is XP zero? Zero. So what are we sending in for this value here? 
maximum age. Oh, something's weird there. There we go. Because I did a slice of it and I didn't just say one. That's what I was looking for here. Okay. So 2415 to 4472 is what we have going into it. And coming back out uh, is not that. So why not? XP is MP predict. We have this. Oh, you know why? Because I haven't trained this thing yet. I just recompiled it right here, didn't I? Let's find out. Let's evaluate it. Um, get some training data and evaluate on it. No, nope. we'll come back to 61% accurate. I'm doing something weird here. What am I doing weird here? Because we should, we should get a decent, decent response back. Let's try another element of this array. From one to two, we're gonna predict that. And our value coming out is this. XP shape, 1576. So we're looking for the first element. And again, we can take NP, arg, max, that over axis, one, zero, zero, fifty, zero, zero. And what value do we have going in? Zero, zero, fifty, forty-seven, zero. So hey, you know, like, somewhat close. However, I thought, zero, one, huh. I would have thought that here, um, yeah, we would just be expecting two elements back instead of three. It's weird that we're getting three elements. Anyway, that's what it's doing. We'll play some more and see what it's doing. Hello. So getting back to this one. Um, whenever it's coming back out, it's coming back with some of the numbers, at least in this example. Let's tell you what. Let's try to predict a, another one and see what it's doing. Our prediction going from index one to two. Let's go again from two to three, um, which is actually at index two. So going in is 0827165. And to confirm that, what should be the Y for that should be 0 and 8. 08000. Zero, 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 zero. Cool. Um, so if we, we already predicted this, right? Let's look at what that prediction comes back as. It comes back as, uh, oh, yep, that's, it's coming back as 0000. zero, zero, zero. So that's how it's getting to 61% accurate. That's what's going on here. It's just almost always predicting zero. And if you do that, um, and with our data coming in, you know, our expected Y is two numbers and then three zeros. So that's two out of five populated, three out of five not. And let's see what three divided by five is. It's 60%. And what's our accuracy? It's around 60%. Same. See what's going on right there? It's uh, it's just predicting zero all of the time. So what should we do from here? Like I could sit here and play with this model and improve it, and make it to where it doesn't predict just zero. Um, our goal right now is to improve the audio model, the bird audio model. So how are we going to do that? Um, like the way to improve it, okay, is uh, 
looking at yeah we're gonna add attention right now right now it's a uh, a CNN uh, it's a multi-layered CNN and we're going to add attention to it uh, to improve improve the results um, so how are we gonna do that right uh, one thought is to go ahead and build the regular CNN that I had before and use the training data that we already have and uh, put that through there just to see if it can do anything uh, I should probably do that um, I wonder how long that would take about five o'clock now. I'll probably do that in the next hour. Let's find out. <laughs> 